Dana Clark. I have a passion for cooking. I could sit here and talk about it all day, but you know what? I'm going to show you. And then even better, I'm going to take you to Mexico and teach you my special guacamole. You know what? It doesn't take that much to make great food. It's all about great ingredients, and that's why I start with the finest. In California, we're about the luckiest. We get the best produce. This is all you need for my guacamole. Look at this beautiful cilantro, avocados, lime, jalapeno, onion, and the top of your guacamole, you want to put cheese, tomatoes, and olives. Finato. Basically, to start my guacamole, we're just going to scoop these bad boys out. And obviously, this avocado is beautiful and it smells good too because one bad avocado can ruin your guacamole. See this limer? This thing is a lifesaver. Otherwise, we'll be in the kitchen for two hours trying to squeeze these limes. Look at that juice. You know, sometimes I want to bring my limes back to the grocery store because I'm like, you just sold me a lime with no juice. But these, these ones seem pretty nice. Now, this cilantro I already have ready for us right here. I've taken off all the stems because the stems kind of add a bitter flavor to it. So I just like the leaves. And now I'm going to finally chop these leaves right here because you don't want a big old piece of cilantro when you bite into this guacamole. You just want the flavor of the cilantro. This is a fine chop. That's it. Now we're going to throw that in. Now, this is very important. Jalapenos. You can't put too many in for me, personally, because I love the heat. But a lot of people can't take it. So, so you know what makes a jalapeno hot? The seeds, you guys. You've got to absolutely take out these seeds, because these seeds will will murder somebody. And they'll be like, water, water. And you're like, no, you can't drink water. you got to drink milk. Milk's the only way to get that heat out of your mouth. Milk and bread, at least. And don't ever touch anyone after you just touch a jalapeno. I've learned that personally. I actually had to go to the hospital with someone. So we don't want to do that. Now I'm just going to chop these jalapenos straight down the center like that. And then you're going to take them and you're going to mince them. There we go. Now we're ready to throw that in. So we got the lime, we got the cilantro, we got the jalapeno. Next we're going to add our onion. Does everyone know how to cut an onion properly? Because half the people that come to my house never know how to cut an onion. Corners, both corners like that. So there you go. You still got the, the, um, the outer layer of the onion on. Now I always like to take off my first outer layer of the onion because I feel like that outer layer is just a little bit tough. Now I'm going to take the onion, set it up, and I'm going to cut it in half. Now I'm going to tilt the onion on its back, and as you see, I'm not, I'm going to cut little slices into the onion, but I'm not going to cut the back off the onion. See that? See how it's still connected? Completely connected to the back. Because this is a perfect way to get perfect little dices for your onion that are all consistent. That's very important in cooking. You don't want big slices and little slices. You need consistency, just like I do with my men. There we go. So, all you really need in my guacamole is a half of an onion. You can, it can overpower the, the guacamole. If you want to put more than that, you can if you love onion. You know, that's what I love about cooking. It's all about being creative, and it's all about just going with the flow. Like I say, winners make adjustments. Wow, this bowl is getting overwhelmed. Let me get grab this bigger bowl right here and then tilt this right in here because we've got a lot of guacamole going on right here. And basically, this is my kick-ass guacamole. We're just going to mince it up a little bit, but I actually don't want the consistency too um, liquefied because I love the chunks when I bite into the chips and there's it's still chunky. There we go. And, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot forget the two most amazing ingredients. A little sea salt, because everything I do, my cooking, has a little sea salt. But you never want to salt too much, because your chips already have salt. And then, of course, cracked pepper. I don't do anything without cracked pepper. I don't leave a restaurant until I have pepper in every single tooth, because that's how much I love pepper. The waiters all come over to like crack my pepper. I'm like, can you just give me that, because your arm's gonna get tired. Now, all my guacamole and the topping really makes it, okay? Now, I just put my, my olives on the side. Now, I'm going to take my cheese and put it in the center, like this. And then, 
for the, our final finale for my kick-ass guacamole. I'm going to take a tomato and I'm going to dice a tomato and I'm going to stick the little chunks on the other side so it actually gives a beautiful colorful presentation to the guacamole plus it adds excitement. And wait till you bite into that chip with the tomatoes, the cheese, and the olives. It truly is a culinary delight. And that is my kick-ass guacamole.